Hey there, Cherie here. Welcome back to the channel. I hope you all have been enjoying National Sewing Month with me. We are here today to unbox sewing machine number three of the four options that our grand prize winner will get to choose from. Uh, yeah, once our giveaway is drawn, our random giveaway is drawn. So let's get into this. We're going to unbox and test drive this Brother sewing machine. This is the Brother XR9550. So let's get down into the sewing room and see what it's like. Okay, so we're down in the sewing room and let's uh, have a look at what comes in the box with this Brother XR9550 sewing machine. So this one does come with a hard uh, cover. So just want to share that, which is nice. And uh, here you can see it outlines on the front of the sewing machine for you, the different stitches that you have. And you, it does include the alphabet, including letters with umlauts, which is <laughs> kind of fun. But you can see here a lot of really lovely stitches as well as different kinds of buttonholes. It looks here that you're gonna have some kind of display uh, once you are using the buttons to uh, adjust to do your different stitches and things like that. But we'll look at that when we get the machine turned on. And so yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and get this all set up. Um, it does come with this extension table for doing some quilting. A nice, uh, very thick uh, manual, actually several different manuals. And then of course you have your cable connector. Your presser foot is nice and wide. Um, I like that a lot. It looks like a much wider one. And then here are a few accessories, including that stippling foot, uh, which is for free motion quilting. I'll get that out and share that. All right, let's get this thing plugged up and take it for a test run. All right, so it comes with the instructional DVD and it has the manual. It separated the manual into three different ones, three different languages, um, but it looks to be, you know, very thorough. I just skimmed it quickly, um, but definitely giving you a lot of step by step, um, which is, of course, quite useful in general, but especially when you're a beginner, it goes through it goes through and tells you um, the auto stitch width and stitch length settings um, with the different stitches. It tells you if you need a twin needle or not, um, et cetera, what the application is for. So this is very, very thorough as far as the decorative stitches go, or they call it the utility stitches. Uh, so yeah, I think it's a, you know, it's a very good manual, very easy to read. So let's uh, get over here. Let's get this uh, other little accessory component open. So this one slides out. And then inside you have your little pouch, which has more of the um, different kinds of accessories and notions that are included. So it's giving you again uh, needles as one twin needle to play around with. You have your buttonhole foot. And then, and then it's giving you a couple bobbins, clear bobbins. There's one inside, so you have a total of four bobbins. And then your different feet that you'll use. Um, again, they're all outlined in the manual. And what else? Oh, and then here you get your little uh, seam ripper, a little duster, the little tool you need to open up this uh, plate here for doing your cleaning and then again it has the um, additional spool holder and spool cap for doing the twin needle function and then this one actually comes with this foot here for doing uh, different kinds of kind of free motion quilting stitching I think that's what that's for actually let me look that up and make sure mine is circular has a bigger opening there. So let me just see what they're calling that foot. Yeah, so they're just calling it the quilting foot. Um, again, since you have this 
uh, wide table attachment for doing quilting. They are giving you that optional accessory uh, so you can play around with some quilting. This machine also has the function where you use the uh, foot pedal to wind the bobbin. I have to say, again, it's winding really evenly and it's actually pretty quiet, I think. I mean, it's definitely, I think, one of the quieter ones. Uh, the quietest so far of the three that I've tested. So yeah, pleased with that. So I'm going to finish getting this bobbin filled and then we'll play around with some stitches. Okay, so the machine is all set up with the bobbin. It's threaded. I do want to show you before we test out the stitches that you do have your speed control, which is nice. I'm just going to use the standard settings for the tension, um, but you have your manual wheel to adjust your tension. It's giving you push buttons to raise up the needle, to go into reverse, and to lower your needle. And then here are your functions for uh, changing the stitch that you want to use. You can see that depending on the stitch, the needle is moving into the position that it needs to be in. And then here, you can then go in and adjust your stitch width and length as well uh, with the different stitches. And again, it will, so for example, if I go up, it's automatically setting the stitches. Um, and let me just show you here quickly. You know, when you go to a stitch, it's telling you which presser foot you need to use. So it's telling me to use presser foot in, uh, which is the open, uh, the wide open one here. Uh, so we'll play around with that and see here when I go back to do just the straight stitch, stitch one is telling me to use foot J, which is the one that comes on the machine. Uh, let's pick a buttonhole. We'll do buttonhole number 37. And you can see it's telling me to use foot A, which is the buttonhole foot. And uh, yeah. And then when you go over here, this is the mode that you need to switch also. If you're doing the regular stitches, you keep it here. If you want to do some of these decorative stitches down here, these here, it's telling you to switch to um, this mode here. And the symbols match. And then if you want to do the alphabet, which starts here, you have to go up and have this mode. Okay. So this is stitch zero. Uh, double zero. Right. But this is also stitch double zero. So you need to change your mode so that it knows to do that stitch. And so, yeah, that's the main reason why is because here it's using up 99 um, numbers because you get so many stitches. So then it's starting over again here and starting over again here. So this machine has a lot of stitches that you can do, which is really great. Okay, so we're gonna get into it. We'll do the same thing that we've done with the previous two machines in the reviews. We'll do the straight stitch. We'll test the zigzag stitch. We'll play around with the stitch uh, length and width, adjusting those. Um, and then we'll do a couple decorative stitches, including the alphabet, as well as the buttonholes. And then I think I'm gonna go ahead and attach the table and test out that quilting foot for you all to see how um, that function works. All right, so right now we're just gonna do a straight stitch. Play around with the speed control for you a little bit. Looks like this one has three settings, so it doesn't really change much in between. Yeah. I'm just doing a really nice straight stitch. beautiful stitch. Now let's play around with the stitch length. I'm going to take that all the way up to five. Definitely see a difference there. Let's see what happens when we're on straight stitch and we change that. Oh, it 
just moved it over. So this on this machine, you use that stitch width to change the position. Okay. So now I'm going to just go up and I'm going to do the zigzag stitch, which is four. And we'll just start off with the regular. And then I will increase it. So we can see how that changes. Very smooth. The machine is not shaking at all. And it's not super loud. But there's zero vibration of the sewing machine as I'm doing this, which is great. And you can see here that you do get some changes in that stitch width and stitch length. So that's nice. Okay, let's pick a decorative stitch. Let's do stitch 19. Let's see what that looks like. I'm going to see if it will allow me to max that out for that stitch or not. Yep, it's making it bigger. So that's a nice feature on this one that you can use the stitch length and width to also alter that decorative stitch. I love that. So let me uh, take that out and show you that differential. So you see how that changed. So it started, this was just the standard settings, the uh, automatic settings that were pushed in there. And then I maxed out the stitch width as stitch length. And you can see how it made it larger. So that's nice. Let's try another stitch. It has this leaf stitch number 69. Let's try this leaf stitch number 69. It's telling me to change the foot to foot in, which has a bit of a wider opening here. So we're gonna go ahead and pop that foot off and you see the difference in the two feet if you put them next to each other. They look a little different. Well, let me lay them down and show you a little bit. So yeah, they are a little bit different looking. You can see here, this has this plastic uh, area in here where here is completely open. It's an open foot. And so, um, yeah, the machine will prompt you right above that stitch number. It will prompt you to tell you which foot you need to make sure that you're using. So just be aware of that. Okay, so we'll play around with number 69. We'll do the auto settings and then we'll, it looks like the stitch length is only at two, but the width is already maxed out there at seven. So we probably can't play around with that too much. So let's just test it out and see. And again, this machine is not moving as it stitches, which is great. So now I'm going to, like I said, the stitch width, this, like I said, the stitch width is maxed out, but let's see what happens when we max out the stitch length. It looks like it maxes out at four. So let's see how the stitch changes. So it's making it longer, but it has the same width. And this little leaf stitch would be a lovely stitch to decorate fall napkins or yeah, if you're doing like a fall table runner, and you could use this uh, leaf stitch, decorative stitch around the edging. 
that would be really, really a nice touch. Okay, let's have a look. <clears throat> okay, so here's the leaf stitch here with the regular settings that come and then you can see as I changed it that leaf uh, stitch just became longer so that's a way to play around and adjust the decorative stitches so that's a nice feature I think because um, depending on what you're doing sometimes you do want to make your decorative stitch wider or smaller uh, so that's kind of nice all right, I'm going to play around with the alphabet and then we will do some buttonholes. Okay, so to combine characters, um, so I'm in that mode A for alphabet. And then I just went through and I typed out um, the different numbers that corresponded to the letters in my name. So I have six letters in my name, Cherie. And this is indicating here that I'm going to be doing six stitches. And I'm starting with, um, you know, so I, I typed in the number or I, you know, had it set on the number 19. And then I came up here and I hit add. And then I added the number 08 for H and I did add, etc. And so the final letter is set here on 05, which is an E. Um, and it's showing me that I have input it six characters yes so right. I can go and I can go back and it's showing me so I'm going to start here uh, number one is going to be number 19 which is the S and then number two is going to be 08 for the H 05 for E 18 for R 05 for E 05 for E so now I'm going to go ahead and sew it and let's see. And so the size of your lettering is set here. You can't do any adjustments on your stitch width or stitch length with the alphabet. Okay, so let's uh, get this stitched up and see how it turns out. Okay, and there it is. I think it did a beautiful job. The spacing is great. Again, it has those little tacking stitches in between the letters. You can use some fine, you know, small embroidery scissors to go in and snip those uh, to open up the spaces between the transitions for the lettering. But I really like it. Now, again, it's a set size. I'll put my fingertip here so you can see. Whoops how big that is so it's a set size um, but again if you just want to make like your own garment labels or um, you know quilt tags um, if you want to just do small uh, name um, you know embroidery like on napkins or lunch bags or you know the pocket of a tote bag or something like that um, just small personalization you know, if you make a set of napkins and you want to have everyone's name on the napkin, for example, it's perfect for stuff like that. So now let's uh, do a couple buttonholes and then we still have to do, I'm going to try to test out the quilting with you guys. Okay, friends. So I tested out three different buttonhole stitches. This one here is just a standard buttonhole stitch on this machine it is number 35. Then I did number 39, which has a little bit of a curved opening here at the bottom. And then I did number 40, which has a little bit of curvature at the top, as well as at the bottom, a little bit larger opening. And so, yeah, you have two, four, six, eight, 
uh, different buttonhole stitches that you can do on this machine. So pretty cool. All right. Um, and again, this one is just a standard one where you pull down this lever to engage buttonhole mold. You don't have to push it back or anything. You just pull it straight down. And then when you're done, lift that back up and change the foot. I'm going to get this machine set up now quickly to do uh, to test out the quilting feature. All right, so I got it all set up. I got the table on. And when you slide the table in, it actually uh, disengages the feed dogs. And so, um, yeah, this is set up for the quilting mode. And uh, I can even see how easily I can move the fabric through here. I chose to do stitch 49 here, which is basically like a free motion quilting stitch. So I'm going to, um, I've typed in number 49 and I'm just going to use the uh, automatic settings here for the stitch width and stitch length. And so, yeah, let's give this a whirl and see. This is my favorite kind of stitching free motion. This is my favorite kind of quilting, free motion quilting. Um, it takes some practice. And uh, but it just gives you it's like it's like painting with thread. I really like it personally. And so, yeah, let's just see what happens. So see how I can just freely move. And it's creating its own kind of stitch there, but then I'm also moving it. If I don't want to move it, let me get over to an open spot and let's see the pattern that it would create. So I'll do this kind of uh, neandering stitch pattern on its own if you don't move it. I'm going to just increase the stitch width, I mean the stitch length. I max that out at four to open that stitch up a bit more. I'm going to turn it. And so again, the table is not rattling. Um, it's just, it's just doing its thing. It's very sturdy. Love that. Okay, let me just go back now to a straight stitch. And let's see um, what kind of free motion quilting I can do with that. So I'm gonna have it on stitch one so that the needle is centered. And then I'm just going to Play around like that. So this is what I like to do when I quilt. And I'll go in. Let me just show you. You can do like, you know, little flower petals. It's like thread painting. Now I'm just rushing here. And you can actually like already you know draw on a different pattern that you want to do and kind of trace over it with the needle you can do it kind of freehand i'm out of practice with this but you get a feeling for what i'm doing here and you could even let me go over here and see i'll show you all this but let me just see if i can do my name free motion Ooh, I'm out of practice with this I used to do this a lot so I used to be really smooth and each machine you're gonna you know you gotta practice and get used to it but yeah okay let's see what this all looks like <laughs> Don't laugh, don't laugh. I need to warm up, I need to practice. This is what I usually do on my big quilting machine. So, so you can see here, this is the stitch 49. This was with it all close together. Here's when I stretch it out, but remember I was also kind of moving it 
just to kind of see what it would do. And then right about here is where I switched to the straight stitch. And then I was just curving and swooping on my own. And then I came over here and I did kind of a freeform flower, which looks a little crazy. And then I did a freeform signature of my name. So yeah, it looks all very crude. This is just a practice. Again, not playing around with much, just using the straight settings. Um, I could have on this stitch here come and max all of those out, right? And gotten a different look. Actually, I'm, I'm gonna do that real quick and just see what that looks like. too far on the edge and then my fabric started poofing up let's come over here all right so I'm gonna do a circle and this is where I can help to change that speed down <laughs> so you get really oh that's too slow for me but you do get a little bit more control and you're turning. I gotta turn that up though. <laughs> okay. Okay, so the stitch width and length is definitely more open. You can see I got the letters a little bit. Um, yeah, so it definitely did change the stitch length. Uh, and width. I think I should have probably just changed the length and not the width. But uh, yeah, it's a, it's a fun feature to play around with. If you, again, if you want to do, I mean, you can do a whole quilt on this um, because it has the wider opening for you to roll it up. You probably can't do like a king size or a queen size, but you certainly can do a lap size quilt, a baby quilt on here probably. Um, and then yeah, of course, if you're doing like quilted. Uh, placemats or mug rugs or tote bags or quilting fabric to sew into a jacket all that kind of stuff very easy to do on this and I'm again I'm very impressed this is not a super heavy machine like it's pretty it feels relatively light and honestly I was expecting this to shake a lot <laughs> based on the weight but it doesn't shake at all it doesn't shake with the table nor does it shake without the table so very impressive you certainly get a lot of stitches um what is that 99 plus another nine plus another 55 <laughs> so you know over 160 stitches you can do here you have the speed control you have the memory function for combining your characters and i think also um i don't i didn't test to see if you can combine your stitches but maybe i'll play around with that in the future but anyway i think this uh brother xr9550 is again an amazing machine for a beginner level machine the amount of features that you get um definitely definitely uh worth the money i think so yeah that's it for this machine this was the first one that has the extension table for doing quilting so again, a plus if you want to play around with stuff like that. So yeah, let me know in the comments what you think about it. All right, friends, so I hope you enjoyed this unboxing and this quick demo of the sewing machine. Let me know in the comments what you think about this sewing machine. Let me know what you feel about it compared to the first two sewing machines that I unboxed and shared. And look out for uh, video number four so you can see the final choice that the grand prize winner will have all right i can't wait to see what you guys think about this sewing machine and i look forward to reading and responding to all your comments soon take good care bye